Hello, here's uh, Telly's Greatest Fan again. And the reason why I'm doing this is uh, that I search for videos about queer uh, autistic people's experience and found close to nothing. So I thought I'm doing a video myself for Pride. It's kind of weird because my channel is not solely for my essays, but kind of a real mix of all the stuff I have ideas for, mostly fan trailers and uh, AMVs, but I think the last video is a Vine uh, comprehension about uh, Egyptian myth mythology or something. So, yeah, but I thought someone had to do it. It's such an important topic and I don't understand how there is so less about it. Uh, sorry for the clock ticking in the background. They are refurbishing the um, apartment underneath us. And so uh, in my room it's super loud and you can hear people speaking in Polish. And that's why I got in, went in the kitchen. And I will delay it every ableist comment, so don't even try. So yeah, I was uh, diagnosed as autistic very young, which meant I know uh, all my life and was very ashamed most of it. But I um, actually thought I was straight for most of my life, but realized with 18 that I'm bisexual. This is uh, something that's barely ever talked about outside of the actually autistic community, but many autistic people are actually LGBTQ. There's a study that uh, autistic people are about 10 times more likely not to be cishet. I hope I pronounced this right. I never heard that, saw that word um, spoken. I only ever read it which is with, with most words, so that's the reason why I, my uh, pronunciation uh, sounds so weird sometimes. There are some people, like uh, that transphobic, ableist treat by J.K. Rowling, believing that uh, that's because we are confused and learning proper this uh, hetero behavior is too hard and we are getting manipulated by the evil, evil queers. However, I believe, uh, and I probably read a study about that once, but I can't find it again, sadly, that when you are an outsider, you see much easier that gender is, for most parts, contradictory to what turfs and uh, right wing uh, people say uh, a cultural construct. I mean, just uh, look at how different cultures' ideas of gender and gender roles or even the number of genders they think exist are. I mean, compare how um, modern-day Germany uh, sees uh, the role of uh, men and women to how modern-day uh, Japan or Korea sees these roles and... Then compare that with how um, the indigenous nations uh, saw gender roles before they were in invaded uh, by um, the Westerners. I mean, they don't even have the, uh, the number of uh, genders Western culture says exist. And I think that shows very clearly that gender is a construct even if there are biological differences, but you can interpret these differences uh, differently how you want. But I think going into this is there's a topic for another radio and nothing I'm very much equipped with because I'm cis. Also no idea how to pronounce that. Whatever. So... Uh, my theory is basically that it's easier to realize how these restricting roles do not fit you um, when you're autistic. Still, for many people, the idea of LGBTQ autistic people does not work. 
Ableism says we are forever children and queer identities are seen as inherently adult and sexual. I um, will actually address this assumption that none of us can have romantic and sexual desire, but not right now. And there is actually discrimination existing because of it. For example, people don't believe in someone being autistic and gay or bi or trans or whatever. Um, the fact that pride parades do not account for us. So it's loud, it's crowded, it has very much to do with alcohol and me and uh, several other autistic people probably don't like the, the loss of control alcohol uh, brings. And most uh, places to meet with other queer people are difficult to navigate for us. Like uh, bars, for example. I have no idea how to behave in a bar. And nobody ever taught me. On a much darker side, I also know someone whose friend was actually denied medical transition because of him being autistic. The doctor said he was just confused due to autism and not really trans and couldn't consent. And this man actually had to leave the country to be able to transition. Not as horrific, but still uh, shows the obsession with gender roles. In my uh, diagnosis, there was actually written, she clothes like a boy. Even at the time I got that, I found that really strange. I mean, it's the 21st century. It's allowed for girls to wear trousers? What the hell? Another example, I talk about fandom briefly, because right now, for me, uh, that's the largest place to observe people, and also because I'm a nerd. There is this um, phenomenon across uh, multiple fandoms, but right now I'm mostly exp uh, experiencing it in the Shira fandom with uh, the canonically uh, autistic character of Interrupter, that there are fans labeling autistic characters who canonically show desires for male and female uh, other characters as asex as uh, sorry asexual. I hope that it's just many asexual people had canon hair, but it does feel strange. On the one hand, I totally know how underrepresented asexuality is, but on the other hand, why has to be every single autistic character ace? I don't want to be a phobic, but I also don't want to lose this extremely rare representation of someone who's like me, even in her sexuality. Being autistic and being bisexual still feels weirdly disconnected for me. It's both part of me, but it's hard to see not just one or the other at the time. Because autistic people like me are not supposed to have sexuality. Which brings us to the elephant in the room. Autism and uh, asexuality and or aromanticism. Yes, there are indeed uh, asexual or ar aromantic autistic people out there. It's completely okay. But that's not all of us. And mainstream culture assumes it's all of us. It comes from this uh, misconception that all autistic uh, people are children, and even adult autistic people, psycho psych uh, sorry, psychologically are like children, don't understand sex, are not able to love or have real relationships. Which is such a cr disgusting cliche, but I still encounter it, and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one. 
that's also actually a misconception about asexuality. It does not mean uh, not understanding and knowing of sex, but just not desiring it. And aromanticism is uh, not uh, someone being hurtless, but uh, just that they don't uh, want uh, a romance, and romance is not the only form of love. Able people are so uncomfortable and disgusted by the, to the thought of disabled people having sex that they rather, rather pretend that they don't want to. It's super dehumanizing and insulting, and it can be a serious toll on one's self-esteem. I hated myself for uh, because still not uh, having no boyfriend in high school where everybody else of my fr a few friends had one. I thought I must still be so wrong and weird that nobody wanted me. I thought that if I just had a boyfriend, I maybe just maybe I would finally be normal enough. The thought that autistic people are not sexual also is the reason for the lack of available information on their specific sexuality. Their communication, sensory is issues, advantages, but also dangers for them. And that uh, is reaching from getting no specialized uh, sex ed to the lack of videos and articles talking about this topic. Um, coming to the own to my own experiences as a, bi a bisexual autistic woman. Okay, how do I say this? Uh, <laughs> I do not want to deny the suffering of others because I'm pretty sure this exists and it's possibly the other way around for some. This is, um, this is just my personal experience. Most of the discrimination and uh, the resulting self-hate against me came from me being autistic, not because of my bisexuality. Yes, I was disgusted and hated myself because of that too, but stuff I endured because of my autism it was much, much worse. The things they say about autistic people, the bullying... As I was younger, I uh, was actually insulted at being a, a lesbian before realizing that I'm bi. And maybe that was also part of the reason why I took a uh, kind of pride in at least being hetero. It first dawned me as I found the land in Babylon 5 attractive. For those of you not knowing the series. She's this uh, wise but ruthless ambassador of basically Japanese-inspired deer aliens. And I just lied to myself that it's just an outliner and doesn't mean anything and stuff like that. I finally had my first boyfriend uh, shortly before turning 18. Um, he was also autistic and we are bonding because of that. But also, and I also denied that, of course I did, I had a crush on a petite, uh, sharp-faced nerd girl from that resident nerd clicker at my school who all hated me. I slowly admitted to myself that I am indeed uh, bisexual to talking with my bisexual open-minded female friends about it. But I was still feeling gross because of my desires. And it did not help that my mother, who I was still closeted to, sometimes let slip how disgusting the lesbians at Pride were. Cheap goes to pride as an ali but well 
or how repulsive she found that one alien woman from Star Trek I found so sexy. A little time after my first boyfriend broke up, I uh, actually, why do I say actually so often, sorry. I ended up having this uh, bisexual autistic male lover and um, he helped me accepting it more because we were talking about it, we were going to a gay club once and we were comparing um, characters we found sexy and it was so nice because no matter if that character was male or female or anything else, uh, it could be that he also found them attractive. I am by now uh, still closeted to the rest of my family, but uh, coming out to my mother went uh, surprisingly well until she never really apologized. But finding female partners is uh, still difficult since I have just no idea how to flirt, even by now, or how to behave in uh, the few places where you can find other women uh, who love women. I mean, you, when you're hetero, you technically could just walk up to every... Um, guy uh, in the street but if you're uh, bisexual or lesbian you can't do that with every woman in the street because homophobia still is a thing and um, it will not be very likely that one of them likes you back. At the end I uh, want to talk about some general experiences about autistic sexuality. I uh, heard of people having sensory is issues with touch or smell, but I did not experience it myself. Yes, uh, touch was very intense at the beginning, but I kind of got used to it. And my partners were also very understanding when uh, I needed time for myself or um, didn't want it to be hooked or, or stuff like that because they were autistic themselves. And actually, because my uh, senses are so much better or maybe just different, I don't know, to uh, neurotypicals, everything is really intense, which is kind of nice during sex. But also, <laughs> funny story, I actually nearly fainted once. A thing until then I thought was uh, solely possible in fan fiction. Both me and my recent partner were somewhat kinky and I actually read a study uh, that says that many autistic people are and the study uh, said that it's possibly because of the many rules in this kind of sex. But for me personally, it was mostly uh, that I really like this experimenting with different things. Communication is a must. That sounds scary at first, but uh, Generally, we are very direct people, and from my experiences, that is the best approach. Saying what feels good and what not, where to touch and how and where rather not. And I... And it's the truth, I never experienced these classic uh, sex horror tales like he comes too early and I don't come and... He's too dumb to find my pleasure uh, spots. And I think it's maybe because of this, when I think about it. If sh uh, someone should ignore some um, your boundaries, it may not feel like it due to uh, internalized ableism, but you definitely deserve better than this. I just wish this topic was more popular and that neurotypicals would finally listen to us 
and not just talk over us all the time. Most of us are sexual beings and please don't erase us.